Goodwill slash thrift shop owners. What are some of the strangest things you found in the donations? I was sorting out some donated items and came across an unusual set of tools. Through some research, we discovered that it was a full, transorbital lobotomy tool set. It got donated to a local university for display. Apparently a vintage set in good condition can sell for around $1,000. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. I was a stalker, not working directly with donations. But, man, so many people donate adult toys. All the way from top-of-the-line Hitachi magic wands to retro little metal things that looked like a Wiimote. Story 3. Decluttering. I threw a journal from my adolescence in the bin. The journal that graphically described my first period at age 11. As well as 14 crushes ranked in order of kissability, mortifying youth group tales, detailed sketches of my fantasy elf wardrobe, dark times I'd rather not remember. Well, my pack rat dad couldn't stand to see a half-full journal on the curb, so he donated it to a thrift store, apparently. Because later, someone contacted him by mail to return it. Thanks, dad. Thanks, stranger. So glad to have that one back. Story 4. Wife worked there as a teenager. Worst thing she found was a newborn baby who just passed. A woman high on drugs gave birth in the street, freaked out, and dumped her baby there. Wife found the baby, called police, and the woman was arrested for neglect among other charges. Managed to dodge murder charge somehow, though. Okay, I know it's just through text, but OP said this so casually. Like, I was starting this one, and I'm like, oh yeah, she found some, like, baby doll or something like that reading ahead, right? Nope, a newborn baby that was, uh, no longer with us. That was a dark one for OP to just drop in the middle there. Story 5. When I was about 16, I worked at Goodwill for about 6 months. There was this old homeless man who used to try and sneak inside to sleep and stuff like that. Every day he'd get kicked out pretty quick by one of my female co-workers. After about a month of working there with her, the homeless man came up to the counter she was working at, gave her a target bag filled with rocks, and left. We open the bag and find a doll underneath about a layer of rocks. It was so friggin' creepy. The doll looked exactly like her. And then, we flipped it over and the back had her full name sewn into it. She quit a couple days later because she was worried about that homeless man coming back to the store. Ah, she turned down a man who can sew? Big L. Story 6. Someone donated an entire trash bag full of dirty diapers. Adult toys. Lots of adult toys. Some older and more naive workers actually priced them and put them in the sales floor. An old electronic chessboard that was somehow worth $2,000 plus. Some rich old lady came in and donated a Ziploc bag full of gold and platinum jewelry. It was real. Huge Beanie Baby collections. Guess someone finally figured out that after 20 years, they weren't a solid investment. It's something you hear about, but I never really saw before. And maybe not really the strangest, but you actually do find some cool old stuff that people think is worthless. Cool job for a while. Story 7. I was a receiving and loading lead at a thrift store for a few years. We had this guy that cleaned out storage units for a living, and then he'd dump whatever he couldn't flip with us for a tax slip. He pulls up and we're going through it all. Pretty nice stuff, looked like it was an estate sale. We get it all unloaded and then we start snooping through it to see what needs to get brought to where. And then we find this green glass vase filled with sand. I started pouring the sand out into the trash so we could figure out if the vase was worth using. That's not sand. Yep. Somehow we ended up with an unmarked, full urn. Story 8. I manage a thrift store in Northern California that supports a cat rescue organization. We get strange donations all the time, such as adult toys, from whips to ball gags to vibes and more, more than a couple times a week. Ashes. I've got a bag here in my office that has some guy from Florida in it. I keep him around. He wards off ghosts and angry customers. Printed money. One time someone dropped off a backpack full of obviously copied money on big sheets of paper. Secret Service came out and got it and everything. We get disgusting stuff too. Some middle-aged lady donated a bag of clothes from her son's room. This shirt was on top. It stank so bad, I still dry heave thinking about it. It's hard to see on the picture, but those are yellow stains all over the shirt. We get lots of interesting old stuff. Victorian cat collar and 1800s French tapestry, old Sears magazines, vintage records, 8 tracks, etc. We recently got a set of dishes that commemorated a state university. Someone bought them for $900. Didn't even know such a thing existed before we got them. Someone donated an old Mac from the mid-90s that still worked. We fired it up and it had all sorts of personal stuff on it. We wiped it and then sold it. Remember to wipe your drives, people. A few weeks ago, we got a reproduction Hatafang Lord of the Rings sword. Pretty cool. And really, I just love working here. It's always something new and interesting. Alright, I uh, bit the bullet for you, everybody, and I'm looking at the shirt that OP linked, and it's kind of just like a white shirt. It's got some kind of triangle emblem in the middle, and yeah, there's yellow stains everywhere. Nothing too interesting, but yeah, 
Pretty gross. Story 9. Whole set of BDSM gear. An entire box of ball gags. A ton of different types of shoes, stiletto heeled leather boots, and full leather bodices or corsets. Oh, and a, uh, adult swing, three latex bodysuits, a bunch of crotchless underwear, a paddle, and two whips. I just don't get why he donated it. Like, what the hell is Goodwill gonna do with it? Also, who has an extensive collection of BDSM gear and one day just goes like, eh, I'm over it. Better clear out my garage. Also, all of it was poorly hidden under ragged Anaheim Ducks jerseys. Never looking at Ducks fans the same way again. Another time, someone donated an entire set of replica Hussar armor, which was easily worth several grand and in good condition. Hey now, OP, it's not just Ducks fans that are BDSM fans as well. They're everywhere. They walk among us. Story 10. I was a manager at a local nonprofit that gives away donated items for free. It's basically a goodwill, but you can just take what you want. Each shopper has a limit of clothes slash toys slash books, etc. that they can take per person in the household per month. We had tons and tons of donations. And my main job was keeping the donations organized and making sure the volunteers and donators were happy. I had a woman come in super PO'd and just started unloading the back of her minivan. Some volunteers grabbed me because they were afraid of her. There were tools, a wedding dress, radios, instruments, tons of valuable items. She was yelling incoherently and I was just trying to get the stuff from her before she threw it on the parking lot ground and broke it. She was starting to calm down and I was able to ask her if she wanted a tax form for all this stuff. Normally people do but it's just for some clothes. This lady was easily donating a thousand, if not more, dollars worth of items. She told me that her husband told her he wanted a divorce after so many years of marriage. And she was PO'd, so she was donating all of his stuff. I was then PO'd because I couldn't take this donation without the guy's permission. So now I had to find a spot to store all this stuff and just hope he would come collect it. He ended up coming a few hours later and we had most of his stuff left. Volunteers put out some of the things, some tool belts, music books, and smaller tools. I didn't ask him any questions, but gave him all of it back. He was much calmer than his wife, so I think I know why he wanted the divorce. She never did come back for that wedding dress, but the dress made another woman's day, so it was all worth it. Story 11. I was so naive when I started working at a thrift shop, thinking everyone was playing jokes on me. That was until I opened a box with a gimp suit in it, along with a few, uh, toys. But over the five years I worked there, I saw it all. Adult toys, nut-stained lingerie, ashes, weapons, got a box of someone's personal files. It was like all of her records for plastic surgery with her credit card details and SIN number, everything. The most memorable moment was when a very elderly worker priced a huge bong as a vase and put it out on the sales floor. I heard some kid was really happy to buy it for $3. The cashier told everyone after he sold it. And yeah, people just don't care sometimes. We have seen a moving truck come with a grandma's house basically packed up in it and dropped off to us besides the jewelry box. Family photos and everything. We found a 9k ring in the pocket of a jacket from that one and more jewelry stashed in clothing pockets. Shows that the family never even looked. Story 12. In college, I was one of the people that directly sorted donations. I've seen it all. Vibes, boxes of fake dongs, a nunchuck collection, just to name a few. On more than one occasion, I have found large amounts of money stashed away in hollowed out books, usually $1,000 plus in new bills. The one story that sticks out the most was this middle-aged man who consistently came in on Saturday evenings to donate used underwear, bags, and bags of it for almost three months straight. Then suddenly, he just stopped. Story 13. So many weird donations that I won't even get into because y'all won't believe me. But the strangest time was when a young man donated a bag of clothes and then a small gecko hops out. We honestly were just all lost at what to do about the little guy until the donor swings back around one hour later looking frantic asking if we've seen his lizard. We kindly show him where it took up residence under the porch used for smoking and we never saw either of them again. Another time a woman dropped off a wedding dress and an accordion with no explanation but she seemed rather upset. What a weird job. Story 14. One day a Russian lady came in with about six gorgeous evening gowns. She kept saying to us that she'd had them since she was young, when she lived in Russia, and that they were high-end slash designer dresses. We couldn't read the tag. From my own knowledge of sewing and dressmaking, I can tell you these were exquisite. I was working with the books, but I managed to get a good look at them and the seams were breathtakingly neat. Hand embellished with beads, crystals, hand embroidered details on some. They'd clearly been well taken care of too, as the colors weren't faded or discolored, and she even brought them to the shop in garment bags. She said she'd brought them in because she was well past wearing them. I think she was in her 60s. They certainly wouldn't fit her. And she wanted some young woman to get to experience the joy of wearing them. 
These dresses were freaking gorgeous. Unfortunately, I left before they were taken out of the back room into the shop, so I never saw who bought them. They were probably bought as Deb's dresses in the end. I don't know what Deb's dresses is. If any of you know, throw it in the comments, I'll check it out. Story 15. This is to all the current thrift shop workers in the Chicago area. A friend of mine recently died and a few months before, she mentioned she had written a letter to me, but never got around to sending it. She also mentioned some presents, but I have no idea what they were. But it's the letter I would really love to track down. Her family donated her possessions to charity, and well, if by chance someone comes across a letter, maybe stashed inside a book or a DVD, DVD addressed to Jade, and being from Jen or Jennifer, then please hold on to it and contact me. She last lived in Arlington Heights. I don't know what was in the letter, but it was supposed to explain a lot. The last time I saw her, we spent a weekend in Fort Worth, Texas. I gave her a ring and told her I was all in. At the time, I lived in New Zealand, and she was going to move out to be with me. Obviously, that didn't happen, and now she's dead at just 42. I'm in Australia and only heard of her passing a few weeks after her funeral, so no goodbyes or last words. Grief makes you do funny things, like trying to hold on to every last memory. I've emailed the thrift shops around Arlington Heights just in case, but I guess I'm just seeking closure. If anyone happens to be around the thrift shops of Arlington Heights or Wheaton and comes across it, please let me know. In the past, Jen has sent me books about writing, sharks, travel, and Chicago if that's something to go on. But we also have inside jokes about clouds, we met in Japan, we traveled to New York and San Fran. Anyway, thanks. Jay Jackson. This is really a shot in the dark by OP, huh? I really hope they found what they were looking for. Story 16. Unopened Christmas gifts, adult toys, and bondage gear once found the Falcon Medallion, the highest honor bestowed upon Icelandic people by the president. Some kind soul also once donated pants full of crap and skid marks. They stunk four miles. Illegal weapons are sometimes donated as well. I once discovered a pair of LC1 chairs, designed by Le Corbusier, valued at about 4,000 each. Serial number dated them three years old. Dentures are not uncommon. Refrigerators and freezers that will stink up the entire shop if opened for a second or two as well. Unlocked computers and hard drives with uh, lots of private photos and videos. Some people apparently like to donate their loved one's ashes. We've had pet cages donated with the dead pet still inside, once a parrot and once a hamster. A box of mealworms, which I took home to feed my beardy. But what troubles me more is when we would get like a box of memories from a kid. You know, pictures of the child, school projects from arts and crafts classes, locks of hair and favorite stuffed toy. Also featured in many of the photos. It's like some parents wanted to forget all about their kid, and I've seen at least three such donations in my eight years working in Goodwill. There's a lot of stories about people donating ashes. How does that, how does that keep happening? Do people mean to donate it? Because that's not a donation, that's just a different trash can. Because I guarantee you, no one, well, okay, no one you want to buy your family member's ashes is going to buy your family member's ashes. Story 19. My time to shine. I'm a manager at a large chain thrift store, and this story is from when I was a pricer, so I priced the clothing before it went to the sales floor. It's pretty normal to find a small amount of cash in a pocket every so often, but one day I was pricing a blazer and I checked inside the inner pockets, as you do, and found two envelopes with Chinese characters on them, with $1,000 in cash each. Inside the same blazer, we found a rubber-banded stack of like 25 credit cards slash rewards cards and an expensive-looking watch. We tried to contact the guy, but his phone was disconnected. I think he probably died and some family member was just donating all of his stuff without checking it. Anyway, I only got to keep $300 of it, but hey, that's $300 richer than I was before. A couple other memorable ones my coworkers have found in the past. A thick bag of cocaine, loaded weapons, and a box of live kittens. Story 20. I posted this before, so I'll just copy and paste it. I worked at Goodwill for a short time. It wasn't exactly a cool thing we couldn't sell, but nevertheless, it was a funny story. One of my fellow employees was telling me about how someone donated a piece of wood, or should I say left a piece of wood. As a joke, she put a price tag on it for $10,000 and said it was a piece of Noah's Ark. Strangely enough, someone believed it and wanted to buy it. Needless to say, management was not very happy and threw it away. Story 21. I worked at Lake Austin Goodwill here in Austin, Texas. One day I was sorting donations and someone had donated a very nice ornate wooden box with a pretty inlay. I turned over the box to look for a maker's mark so I could price it appropriately, and poof, ashes fell all over me. Lots of ashes, yes, those kind of ashes. 
I'd like to think it was just the forgotten remains of a once beloved pet, but it was way too large of a quantity of ashes to just be a dog. Someone had most likely and hopefully unknowingly donated grandma's cremated remains, which were now literally coating me like some sort of satanic deep frying batter. Needless to say, I requested to go home early. I proceeded to take many, many showers and scrubbed my body very hard, till my skin was red. It was, to say the very least, traumatic. Story 22. First, let me say that I work at the warehouse and handle all of the computers and higher-end electronics. That means I do not directly take donations. The dock workers take the donations and are then supposed to separate the trash out and divide the items by departments. The worst day I had opening a tote was the day I found a specimen jar a quarter full of what appeared to be coagulated nut, and some used paper towels. I had to dispose of all of the items in the tote due to potential contamination and immediately called the manager of the store that shipped me the tote in question. I also frequently find bottles of chemicals, propane tanks, rusted blades of various types, tools like saws, knives, etc., and broken glass from various sources. I have found disturbing photographs, typically on SD cards but also Polaroids, used underwear, adult toys, and various lingerie. I even once found a lace teddy that was torn up and covered in what appeared to be blood. You can usually expect one to three strange or funny items every week. What really irks me though are eye devices, iPhones, iPads, and the like. It's great that people want to donate said items, but around 90% of them are activation locked or not reset at all, with the iCloud account still active on it. That means we can only recycle these items to our electronic recycling facility because it still has personal information on them, and we aren't allowed to bypass the FRP. We waste about 1500 to 3000 a week on iDevices, so if you're going to donate them, please sign out of your iCloud account and reset the device before doing so. Story 23 one of my friend's mom buys unique items she finds at thrift stores, restores them, and either resells them or keeps them. A couple years ago brought home a cool-looking vase she was going to restore. It looked like it was made from some pretty expensive materials, and my friend was inspecting it when she pulled out a long, gray hair. Turns out the vase is actually an urn from the 1800s. My friend's mom refuses to get rid of it because it would be bad juju, and the Gertrude now lives on a shelf with other weird Goodwill finds. A vase that old? Yeah, that has an evil spirit. You don't want to mess with that. Keeping it on the shelf is a good call. Story 24. I've never worked at one of those places, but I have a cool story that a plumber told me. So this guy bought a rug from a thrift store. He unrolled it in the store just to see the pattern and then brought it home. He propped it up in the corner and then kind of forgot about it. Then one day, a few months later, he got in the mood for a home improvement. He cleaned his house, rearranged his house, and then went out on his garage and plopped the rug down. He grabbed the corners and pulled, like he was throwing a sheet over a bed. When he did, $10,000 fluttered through the air. I don't know why no one had unrolled this rug through its travels, but damn, that is some comeuppance. Story 25. I worked at an animal shelter thrift store and we had a weird policy of not reselling fur or non-cow leather, but regular cow leather was okay. Anyway, someone donated this massive, gaudy, carved elephant ivory jewelry set. Normally, the manager would give me anything that we couldn't sell under those rules, but this stuff was worth a ton of money. She ended up putting it up for sale and received daily harassment from all the animal rights people that shopped there. I think it was priced at like $10,000 and it never sold. Because people with that kind of money aren't typically looking at thrift stores. Okay, animal rights people, I, I get it. It's the hunting of exotic animals is no bueno. Sure, fair. But like... That jewelry is already made, and no one in the store had anything to do with killing the animals to make it. So, like, what do you want them to do? Give the ivory back? Because I don't think that's going to happen. Story 26. I briefly worked at a thrift store that a lot of questionable people visited. One day, I was cleaning out one of the dressing rooms. Someone had just left all of the clothes they tried on on the floor and inside out. I started to turn a pair of jeans right side out when I felt something sticky and wet soaked through the jeans. I looked down and what I saw was so utterly disgusting. Someone had shoved their freshly used tampon in the pocket of the jeans before leaving. It is not surprising I quit a couple weeks later. That's not just disgusting, that is a biohazard. OP, I hope you washed your hands. Preferably with hydrochloric acid.